everybody. <laughs> We're here in my tiny house. Savvy Sweets with you. I'm Savvy. Sweets here. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to be talking to you today about how to travel to Italy on a budget for cheap with not a lot of money. Traveling the world with Savvy Sweets. Yeah. Important information for you right now. If you don't want to watch this entire video because we get it, we have a lot of information. Uh, a lot. You, a lot of information. And good information. But if you don't need to know all of the information, check out below. We will have timestamps. Timestamps. <laughs> check out the timestamps. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe to our channel. So first thing, first, when you're talking about Italy, you want a glass of red wine in your hand. Got it. Done it. All right. So the first category we're going to be talking about when it comes to saving money and traveling to Italy for cheap is flights. Decide where you want to go. The cheapest places in Italy to fly into are going to be Rome and Venice. Venice is a cheap spot. It is, I think, the most traveled place in the world. Um, you can find tickets depending on where you are coming from. We are coming from Seattle International. You want to try to find your closest international airport. We find direct flights anywhere from 300 to 500 round trip you can find. Some things that I use to find cheap flights are Scott's Cheap Flights, scottscheapflights.com. They are not paying me to say this, but I'm telling you because they can give you ideas of where to travel. You sign up with your email. There's a lot of different websites and things that do this, and they will send you emails on basically the cheapest... Oh, <laughs> They will send you an email when there are cheap flights. It's just a cheap flight alert. You can sign up for premium or not. But anyways, so I got a cheap flight alert one day that, hey, flights from Seattle to Venice are $400. So I decided to wait until the next morning to buy them. Don't do that. If you see cheap flights and you want to go somewhere, buy them. You got to get it. You got to get it. If they're like 300 400 don't wait because a lot of times, like I waited till the next morning, then they went up. So this time we flew into Venice and then we took a bus to Rome, but you can also yes. fly into Rome for cheap. So once you kind of know where you want to go, you can also use Google flights. It's really simple. I use Google flights for everything because uh, once you pick the hub that you're going to be flying into, you can look on their flights calendar and it has the different prices for each day and in green it will have the cheapest days and yeah. if you're kind of flexible then you can uh, plan your trip around the cheapest days. Did you mention Skyscanner at all? No. Skyscanner is something that a lot of people use. I personally don't use it actually but a lot of people say that it works for them. I just really I just use Google Flights because I love to research so if you can um, really look into it, but I know that Skyscanner will alert you as well and mm. things of that nature So maybe check into Skyscanner and also traveling on the off season is a big thing You're gonna find much more expensive tickets in the summer late spring early fall um, You will find way cheaper tickets in the fall in the winter especially and early spring So if you can travel in those days, I personally recommend the fall. I love the fall because you're coming out of summertime, people are still jiving on the sun, uh, drinking red wine out on your terrace, out in the piazza. Mm. Um, it's still warm enough to do that. And it doesn't get too cold through the winter. That's not true. It snows in the Vatican sometimes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Cut mm. all this out. So. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I'm like not knowing what to say, I'm like, well, I'll go to that. <laughs> That's a... Uh, Words of an alcoholic. The next category that we're talking about is accommodation. Accommodation! So this is the next thing you'll be looking at after you book your cheap flight. Um, it's important to book accommodation in advance because if you wait till last minute, which I have done sometimes in the past, the prices go up, 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 way up. And then if you wait till you're there, which I've also done, you're not going to be getting the best places to stay. So you can do your research on good areas to stay. Um, I personally like to stay in hostels because most of the time I'm traveling by myself, um, sometimes with a person or two with me. Yeah, hostels are awesome because you meet a lot of people. There's usually like a communal kitchen. You're cooking with other people. Um, you can even get a private room at a hostel if you're not into the idea of sleeping in a 
dorm room with maybe some other people, but I've never had any bad experiences. I've never had anything stolen. Um, also, if you're not into hostels or if you're traveling with many people, Airbnb is a good option as well. Or like in Venice, for example, we stayed at the Wombats Hostel in a six bed private room because there was four or five of us. So price wise, it worked out to be like $10 a person to stay in this um, six bed private room. But I, I don't see that at many hostels, but in Venice, the Wombats Hostel. Uh, I love when I stay in Rome, there's an Airbnb. I, it's actually through booking.com. It's Al Pantheon con Thomas Mann. <laughs> we'll write that for you. <laughs> and here's what it looks like walking out of this door. It's an awesome place. It's not that expensive. It's maybe like $100 a night, but it depends on the season you go. Don't quote me on the prices. But anyways, if you're splitting this between multiple people, it ends up being not that expensive. Um, this is a teaser for our next episode of MTV Cribs. Row. I was hoping it wouldn't open, <laughs> so you'd realize it. It's pretty dumb. <laughs> Remember to think about where you are located and transportation costs. So like, for example, when we stayed in Rome, we stayed central, right outside the Pantheon. It was awesome because we could walk everywhere. So maybe you're paying a little bit more a night, but you're saving on not having to pay transportation fees. We didn't bus or train anywhere when we were in Rome. Yeah. We, we walked, walked a lot. I was literally clocking in like 25,000 steps <laughs> a day. We were getting yoked. Yeah. Yeah. We're soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> and the benefit of walking so much, you can eat whatever you want and drink as much <laughs> as you want. Pro tip, Go to the grocery store, get a box of wine, put it in a water bottle so you don't look like an alcoholic and walk your little heart away. Yeah, and in Italy is a little bit, it is a little bit more humid there. So you are sweating a little bit. And if you're walking yeah. all that wine, like you're gonna feel the up of the wine, but you're just gonna flow past it pretty soon, so. It's true, you're working it right out of your system. And on the point of it being a little warmer and walking around, so when I'm walking around in colder seasons places, when I'm walking 10 miles a day, I don't find anything to be odorous. But in these times, like you mentioned at hostels, <laughs> bring like an essential oil, like lemongrass, or maybe some baby powder for your shoes, because you're gonna be walking a lot. I, I swear I never get stinky feet. But when I'm traveling, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> but when I'm traveling in s warmer places, warmer times, and I'm walking 10, 15, 20 miles a day, 50 miles a day, uphill both ways. 100 miles a day. Sometimes your shoes can get a little stinky. That's true, because that last trip, my like my shoes don't smell here, but there. I was like, Andrew. There, I threw we away got, a we pair gotta do of flip-flops, because they were long gone it was sad. so don't feel bad if you smell a little bit when you're traveling because you're exercising a lot you're also sweating out a lot of toxins because in Italy you will be <laughs> drinking a lot of red wine you will if you want to become a local I did not like red wine until I traveled to Italy because what goes best with pasta 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 red wine 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 you don't even know if this is wine this could be grape juice you don't even know I know, it's not. We'll see by the end of the video. We're not if liars, it's, it's wine. <laughs> I'll put my okay. finger where your butt was. Because <laughs> <laughs> you need to be in the okay. same spot. Okay. <laughs> there was your butt. Okay. <laughs> now Andrew's gonna tell you a little bit about what to do with your money. Do you pull it out before you go, Andrew? No, you see, if you pull out your money before you go or when you're in the airport, you're gonna get swindled. You're gonna get a bad conversion rate, especially if you see a machine that says Euronet. Do not use Euronet. They're just gonna take the money out of your pockets. Definitely when you get to Italy, find a bank that is local and there's usually ATMs that are just right outside the door. Um, you can just get your money there. It'll be a better conversion rate and you'll save some money. Ooh, and you always wanna pull it out using the local rates or the like the local currency so it'll say do you want it to charge in dollars or euros euros yes because your bank 
is going to be the one to then convert it and they will give you a better rate. This has saved me a lot of money. And you could go to your bank before you leave and say, hey, can you change this cash, US dollars or wherever you're coming from into euros? Yes, that would be fine, but you don't know exactly how much you're gonna spend. Let's say you have some leftover, then it's gonna be a pain in the behind to then convert it back. So if you just pull out chunks at a time, like we were pulling out like 50 euros at a time or yep. something, then when you run out, you can kind of better gauge it that way. All right, so now Savannah's gonna tell you some things that you should pack or not pack in your preparation for your travel. Hold my wine. I'll hold it. One thing that's really good to have um, a universal charger. So in previous trips, almost every single trip, I would forget a charger because, pro tip, their plugins are different than ours. They're weird. So you get there and you can't plug in, you can't charge your phone, anything. So you have to go to the store and get an adapter or go to the market and get an adapter. And a lot of times these are more expensive or geared towards tourists and don't really work for a very long time. Yeah, like I bought not a, an adapter, but I got a wireless external charger for my phone and it worked great while I was there, but now it's kind of starting to die. So you definitely want to buy things before you go. Mm -hmm. And it's good to have an external battery because if you're walking all day or yeah. whatever, it's really nice to have that extra charge just in case you can't get to somewhere to charge your phone. Um, but I really like this universal charger because I have so many of them because every country you go to, not every country, but different regions have different plugins. So this one has all three. Here, let me just show you. Oh God. <laughs> okay, it feels like it's not zoomed out all the way. Okay, so this is the universal adapter. We have one place, boom. We have another country, boom. Oh, I didn't even know it did that. We have another country, boom. Bo <laughs> boom. Boom. So three countries in one. And the awesome thing is, is you have a plug-in for your country. You plug it in here, then the back plugs into the wall. And here, you have two USB ports. So you can be charging like three different things while using this. That's pretty dope. It is pretty dope. Can they, where do they get that? You can find this um, on Amazon. You can check in the description below and you will find a link to this awesome universal charger. My issue before is I would buy a different one for every country. So this saved me a lot of time and money. I was spending like 10 to $20 every time I traveled, every time I changed countries to get an adapter. So this was about 10 bucks. You can find it in the description below. Got it off Amazon below. And it has worked so well. I can take it anywhere I go. Um, I, need to, I need to get one of those probably. Yeah, you do. Cause I was just using yours the last time. Yeah, which works too. If you're traveling with people, it has uh, three different inputs, so you can share. Also, I don't always promote going to college unless you really know what you want to do. Side note. But if you are going to college, if you're going to school of any kind and you have a student ID card, bring it with you because they give student discounts for a lot of different things like the Vatican. It was a huge discount. Oh yeah. Just because they had a student ID, which I don't. I did. But they did. I'm educated. He's educated. I can save a few words in English. <laughs> and you saved Sometimes. a few dollars, but you spent a few dollars to go to college. So I'll talk about that. <laughs> so you want to bring your student card and also a good thing to bring a water bottle. The mm. awesome thing about Italy and Rome is they have flowing drinkable water. Just drink it up. So you can save a few bucks. You don't have to get a water bottle from the store because some places you're traveling in Italy might not have the best tap water and you might not want to refill it from the tap. Like Venice, kind of some stanky water. So like Rome, a lot of other places, they have outdoor water fountains. Just go fill up your water bottle. Also a little pro tip, you can put wine in your water bottle. Yeah, it's a great way to go. But we didn't do that. Oh, we didn't talk about seduction. What about seduction? Cut to seduction. Tell me. I, I don't know from first-hand experience, but I've observed from my first-hand perspective, seduction is a real thing. 
And if you happen to be a girl, then <laughs> you can probably get things for cheaper. Or if, I don't know, I mean, if you're a guy, if you're like, I don't know. I feel like most of the like people who are running the businesses are, is that not true to say men? There's a lot of men working in service positions and men in Italy are a lot more forward with their appreciation of beauty and of women as a whole. Savannah got a lot of things cheaper or free or free or yeah. benefits. We got free desserts at some places. We just had a delicious meal. And we're full beyond belief. And our good pal Edie at Miscellanea provided us with free tiramisu custard and a whole glass of lemon chili. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah. Some free wine, some places. You just gotta work it, you know? If you got it, even if you don't, just work it. You're work gonna it. get you're gonna get some discounts. Or you might get kicked out. Probably not though, because they're pretty over there they're a little bit more lovey and more. They're super lovey. You'll be walking down the street and it's mm, ciao bella. Yeah. Ooh, grazie. Oh, that's thank you. Um <laughs> <laughs> Grazie mille. <laughs> but yeah, seduction is real. It's a real thing, and they're very appreciative of beauty, so don't get too creeped out because, you know, use your vibes, feel those vibes, because there are, of course, creepy people everywhere in the world, but not everywhere, just some places. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you gotta use your vibes. Feel the vibes, because not, people aren't, like, creeping on you everywhere. Like, U.S. is so different. You don't walk it's down so the street different. and people are, like, appreciating your beauty, you know, to your face. Well, if you hug somebody or kiss somebody, like here, it's like, oh my, like, not oh my gosh, but it's like a way bigger deal yeah, than over there. Yeah, they kiss everyone. Like, the men are kissing men. Like, when you come and meet someone, <laughs> it's a kiss kiss on a cheek. That's a very normal thing. Don't get freaked out. If there are people commenting on your beauty on the street, we're a lot different in the U.S. about that. And I know people can tend to get offended in that kind of situation, but... Don't worry about it. Yeah. Unless you got the vibes. Always check in with your gut. But for the most part, they are appreciative of the human body yeah. in a very natural, loving way. So use your body for money. <laughs> That's what we're That's saying. That's what we're saying. That's the main <laughs> idea. Thanks for watching our video. And be sure to subscribe. <laughs> 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 <laughs>